By the way, I'm still pissed off at you for standing me up a year ago at, at uh, Spider Mountain. Well, we couldn't really do a whole lot in the rain, so. Yeah, and Cobra Kyle <laughs> and Matt and Matt Hunt, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Who, now, who now lives in Idaho, I think. And I think so. Some here. All right, let, let's, let's get started. Okay. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Shut Up and Ride podcast where we interview, yes, we think of questions for Eric. Obviously, my guest is Eric from No Front Breaks. Um, he is certainly one of the inspirations for me to get started doing this, and he has a fantastic uh, channel. So we mostly interview mountain bikers, free riders, and generally cool people, and Eric fits all those bills. So if you want to ask him a question, just type it in the comments, cobble together a couple of your little sentence fragments, and we'll get to that. Um, I always say this, I'm never a big fan of watching interviews. So we don't go very long, um, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me if everyone else isn't involved either. So there's kind of four parts of this. Um, and don't forget, let me tell you a couple of things. First thing, YouTube creators are lucky Patreon came along because if it didn't, it's not worth it. And I know neither Eric nor I are in it for the money. However, it does help quite a lot. Um, new thing this week, if you look on the left bottom of my screen, that's my awesome AF group that's already uh, gone here. And my upcoming uh, stickers of guests that I have are Brian from BKXC, Nick from Van Cam, Ryan Lone Ranger, Bobo from Bobo, uh, Stefano from Blind Stuff, Joe from Mr. Tonka, there's Seth from Trail Builds, uh, Josh from Daily Mountain Bike, Joseph, and oh, by the way, Joseph, I am so sorry that this sound sounds like shit, and Joe is going to save me, Joseph's going to save me, and there's Shane the Crashing Dad in Remington, RC. So, Eric, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Eric from No Front Breaks, and uh, I started making YouTube videos like two-ish years ago, coming up on three years at the end of the summer. Um, just because uh, initially I just wanted to get some good vid videos of my local trail. A lot of them were shaky at best, filmed on head-mounted cameras, and I had been watching people like your Seth's, your Brian's, your Alex's for a, quite a while, and I thought I could make something that's kind of that quality. Uh, so I started making it. And then I remember that I don't have a hand. So uh, there's probably something to that. And that's where No Front Breaks came from. All right. Hang on. Okay. Give me the mechanics of your left hand. The brake, you're pulling two brakes at one time? E, well, it depends on what type of terrain, but yeah, my, my, I guess it's like this. It's not a gang sign. Uh, my brakes are stacked and I can pull them like this. I can pull just my rear and then modulate the front. Um, I have an ergon grip, so I have a lot, like basically like a shelf there. So my ring finger and pinky can grip the back of my palm basically or grip the bottom of that and then most of my palm sits on the grip and i've grip shift and i have my dropper lever so let me ask you this right there. so i've been watching you uh since i started watching mountain bikes from an adaptive point of view could you have a better setup than you have now because because i've watched you evolve through lots of shit i remember actually I was telling my wife, like, I saw this guy on YouTube, and I, I think what most people forget is that you started with your elbow in your hand. And, <laughs> yeah. and you're like, it's so dumb. <laughs> and, and so I actually went on the trail, and I put my elbow yeah. on my left grip in my hand. I'm like, what was this guy thinking? So yeah. like, can, can you improve what you have now? Yeah, for sure. Um, like what? Like, like what's the holdup? Well, right now, so I actually just had a breakthrough this week. 
Um, I'm there's this guy Shane. Uh, I forget his last name on on Instagram. He's Shane Dog, some number. Um, but he rides in California. In oh, that's the guy you're looking for. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I just talked to him, and he uses he has no hands, which is completely insane to me because, I like, I don't know how he does it. Probably the same way that other people look at me and say, I don't know how he does it. I but, don't know how you do it. I have uh, no idea how you do it. But he has a different, it's called a terminal device, the attachment that's on the end. He has one that's made, I think it was made by uh, like a dirt biker or the father of a guy that was missing a hand that rode dirt bikes. And so I'm talking to him and asking him questions about it. And uh, that's one possibility in the future for me. All right, let's get to the regular questions here, okay. Mister. What kind of mountain bikes do you have? I have uh, my every ride bike basically is a Da Vinci Spartan Twenty Nine. That's uh, your daily driver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I kept my old bike as kind of like a tinkering bike. It's a Santa Cruz High Tower. Um, I have. From Joseph Trail Features, I bought his uh, Redline D26 uh, Dirt Jumper. And I think that's it for me. I think that's all I have right now. I had a hardtail. It's it's out on loan to somebody right now. Let me ask you this, because normally the, the uh, next question is, do you ever re have you ever regretted selling a mountain bike? But I'm going to add on to there. When you sell a mountain bike, you must have to that's got to take you hours and hours to reconfigure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I once sold a bike without, I sold a bike, my very first mountain bike without thinking of it. It was like a 95 or 96, uh, KHS hardtail, um, that, it, that I had since I was 15 or 16. It was the only bike I had. Uh, and I sold it when I moved to Texas and I kind of regret that. Cause I wish that I had it just for a sentimentality sake, but there's that thing was so the upkeep on it would have been too crazy. And I, I mean, when I got back into mountain biking, there's no way that I would have even been able to ride that thing. It was 20 years old by that point. All right. Let's piss everybody off. Is 26 inch dead. I, I've never ridden one. Uh, actually, no, I probably have 20 years ago. Uh, but I mean, I went right, I jumped right to 29 when I got back into it. I don't really have a strong opinion or a controversial opinion on it. I know that all our downhill friends still like them. Uh, one of my friends, Robert, still has a 26 inch uh, a Banshee with 26 inch wheels and he loves it. So, yeah, Jordan Boostmaster is like, uh uh uh, it, it's yeah. alive and well. Yeah. I think, I think Kevin from Steady Spin said the same thing. Yeah. Are, are you a gearhead? No, not really. I geek out on things. I geek out on computer equipment and like camera and lights that I probably have no business using. But uh, as far as bikes, I don't really know what I'm doing or have any real strong opinions on geometry or new technology. So I'm just kind of putzing along. Let me ask you this. All right. You're, you have a mountain bike company. What do you manufacture? Hmm. I would, my gut would be to say to make adaptive parts, but that's such a niche. There's no way that would ever be profitable. Um, so I don't know. Actually, I would love to do a mountain bike apparel company, if anything. Any type of mountain biking company I can possibly do, it would be apparel. Speaking of which, you seem to have a real knack for graphics. Like, you, like your logo is really well thought out, really good. Like, it, it, it's I know your gear is really, really good. What, what's that all about? Um, so I I work in user experience for my full time job. Uh, I work in in a user experience department. Um, and I used to design a lot of things. I really suck at vector at like illustration. So I kind of pay other people to do that, but I still have ideas. And so like the, 
armadillo in the tire and living in Texas and me always wrecking my bike and the tuck and roll thing like that kind of just came together in my head. And then I had someone come up with what I saw in my mind. What's the name of your mountain bike company if you actually owned one? Oh, geez. I don't know. Armadillo. Armadillo ain't bad. Yeah. All right. What needs to change in the mountain bike industry? My number one pet peeve with all of my bikes is that I always screw up the derailleur and I always need tune ups because my derailleur gets out of whack. Okay. So I don't know anything about what is opinion boxes, gear boxes. I don't really have any idea how they work mechanically, like from an engineering perspective, but I would love it if something was to change the game in that realm. You hit the nail on the head for me. It's just, I, I don't understand why we still have derailers. Like someone hasn't come up with some way to shift gears better than something that hangs two inches off the ground yeah. that I'm going to hit 18 times and bend the shit out of it. Yeah. That, that drives me nuts. What's your worst injury on a mountain bike? Uh, getting concussed. I've you got that. Yeah, I've gotten two concussions, both at bike parks. Um, That's kind of obvious. Yeah, I'm a little slow on the uptake. Uh, yeah, and both of them were because I didn't have my setup dialed. And I go wow. over jumps, my arm comes off, or it rains, and my arm comes off uh, the bars, and then I'm just a ragdoll. Uh, and both times, I was wearing a full face, so you know, no teeth or broken bones or anything, but both times... Man, I don't remember getting down the mountain the rest of the way. Holy shit. I'm, I'm glad that happened to you and not me. <laughs> Will you ever own an e-bike, an EMTB? I don't, know how, I don't really have a problem with owning an e-bike. I've thought about it. Uh, for me, it's just about cost. They're a little out of my price range and it's hard for me to justify it when I already have three bikes and then I'm going to get one and then I'm going to have to, because like for anyone else, they just buy a bike and they start riding it and they're like, I'm good to go. But I always have like another 500, 600 bucks to dump on top to get this, get my setup right. Yeah. I bought mine used. I was very happy about that. And that's how I afforded it. Yeah. All right. Second section, but before I start this section, here's a couple things I want to talk about. Don't forget uh, to sub subscribe to Eric's channel. It is well worth it. Um, Eric is OG. Um, check out his Facebook and his Patreon. Patreon does make a big difference for a lot of creators. And uh, had it not come along, a lot of creators that you know still wouldn't be here. Um, all the links are in the description right now. And so I'm going to ask the next section. But if you're watching this, start thinking of questions that you have for Eric. And I'm going to ask them at the end of this. All right. What are you not very good at? Um, well, I already talked about illustration. And that's something that I really wish I was good at. Um. I'm not good at being clean. I'm kind of a slob a little bit. Um, I don't know. I like figuring things out on my own, but I'm not very good at it. Uh, like I think as people, we have this like fake it till you make it mentality. And I think that's true in like jobs, relationships, anything. Um, but I like transparency and that's why I kind of, rip on myself a little bit on my channel. Uh, I think vulnerability is a good thing to show to other people. Certainly. Tell me something that you think is true that almost nobody agrees with you on. Okay. This is going to be controversial. Like flat earth shit or no. anti-vax? No, this is a different kind of controversial. And I've had this right. discussion with my girlfriend and we usually try to loop in as many people. Anytime we meet someone new or like we loop in other people to get a more level opinion. I think that it is perfectly acceptable 
when you go to the ocean, if it is, if there's no publicly accessible background or bathroom, I think it's perfectly acceptable to go out in the water, drop trowel and poop. Everyone knows that. Well, that's what I mean. I don't believe, I don't think I should bury it six inches in the sand for some poor family to unearth when they're building sand castles. Or some old person like me with a metal <laughs> detector. Like, beep, oh shit. It really is shit. Okay. What is your superhero name? If you were a superhero, which huh. I think you are. Oh, thank you. Uh, An armadillo man doesn't count. Yeah, that's too easy. I can see it on the screen. Um, Would it help if I started out with what's your superhero power? Yeah. I think I would like teleportation more than anything, oh, especially shit. with this super expensive hobby that we got into. Um, uh, I would love to just blink my eyes and travel somewhere, but transport anything that I'm touching. So <laughs> greedy. Yeah. So what does that make your superhero name? Well, I'm a huge comic book nerd and there's one already called there's a, a an X factor. There was one called uh, maybe it was X force. There was a, a lady called blink that had that power. Tell me you're a huge yes. fan of uh, the movie. V for Vendetta. I am. It's been a long time since I've seen it, though. So good. What do you wish you had known before you started out this particular journey? Um, like th this YouTube crap. I would say I wish that I had known that. I thought that everyone would watch because they were they wanted to preview a trail that they would never end up riding. And that's not true. People, rock, people watch people watch YouTube because they get to know you and they want to hear what the story is. They like to hear you talk. They want to know more about your life or be taken on a journey. They want to know how you feel, what you're experiencing. Unless you're on Zwift, like watching videos to watch the riding or unless you're watching Red Bull Rampage, like that doesn't really fill any need for me. And I think that's true for most people. I am on Zwift and I yeah. thought I'd hate, I thought I would hate it and I hate getting on and I hate getting off. <laughs> I, I, I've turned out to like it a lot. I, I'm really surprised. What's something that you failed at? Oh, lots of things. Almost anything I try to do with my bike. I told uh, I left a comment on that on the Joey podcast last week. But I I re I got these racks because I just moved, and I got these racks for the garage in my new house, and I literally spent like two days trying to get two racks, hang bike racks, installed in my garage, and I kept on having to drill holes. I measure, I drill holes doesn't go into the stud, even though I use a stud finder, I have to take the thing off, find and find and try to recenter it without screwing it all up. It, yeah. So most things I try to do with my bike or around the house, I screw up. Uh, and like I said earlier, I really want to be good at illustration. I want to be pretty self-sufficient when it comes to like doing motion graphics and stuff for my channel. And no matter how I, no matter I'm good at Photoshop, I can make a thumbnail, but no matter how hard I try, I'm, I just suck at it. Uh -huh. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, the like real douchey thing that people say is just send it. And I don't do that. Um, I can see in my mind all the wrecks and all the ways that I can get hurt. Uh, and then I just don't do it. I chicken out. Um, mm. And so, and then, and then I've been with people who encourage me to do something that I wouldn't have done by myself and, or I'll come back and do something later after chickening out for like years. And then I'm like, that was really dumb. I don't know why I didn't do it. Then what's the worst piece of advice? Um, well, Besides something, that something that I've heard for a long time now that I think is 
pretty untrue and when it comes to youtube is to just pump out content like just make videos make videos and make videos and then more that equals views that equals subscribers and i don't think that's true um like everyone everyone always cites like casey neistat but casey neistat wasn't successful because he did a video every day it's because he was good at it right i don't i don't think people realized when Casey Neistat was doing that vlog every day, I don't think he, they realized that he was working 14 to yeah. 16 hours a day. And like, the impact I, it had every, on his life. Yeah, every time I watched it, I'm like, dude, you're going to be divorced. No one will like you. You're going to be a drug addict. Yeah. You, you cannot sustain this. Yeah. But if, How many uh, years did he do it in a row? I think it was five years. Yeah, that's insane. And I, I, and I would tune in every day and I, I could never believe like, well, this is going to be like yesterday and every day. So God bless him. I'm glad he's uh, moved to California and doing better. And what's a personal trait that's got you into the most trouble? I am stubborn, really, really stubborn. Um, someone will give me advice to your detriment. Yeah. To my detriment for sure. Um, someone will, well, it's both. I mean, obviously like I wouldn't be riding a mountain bike unless I was stubborn. Um, but people will tell me something and until I live it, it doesn't click for me. Even Hmm. if, even if it would have saved me trouble in the long run, I'll still, like, I have to learn by my, my mistakes or I won't learn it. The older I get, the more I ask for help. Like, for instance, the, the sound quality of this sucks. And our, our, our mutual friend, Joseph, is just sending me something. I got an Instagram from him. I'm sending you something. I'm like, what? Just, I'm sending you something. Your sound and your deal is horrific. So God bless Joseph, and he'll be on here soon enough. Yeah. All right. Cake? Or pie? Pie. Always pie. Um, I do like carrot cake, but always pie. Um, but cobbler is better than pie. Wait, wait, wait. What's the difference between cobbler and pie? Cobbler is pie. But it's in a square. Pie doesn't have to be circular. circular. Sure it does. No, not circular. Could- a pie is a wedge. Well, I guess the whole pie is circular. I could end this right now if you want. <laughs> we can get into cake or pie. Pie. All right. I like cobbler too. All right. Let's see if we have any uh, questions out there. Here's one right here. So the middle age masher wants to know thoughts on Shimano versus Shram. I have no thoughts. The best one between those two is whichever one comes with my bike. You know, that, that's so funny. I don't care either. The one that works. Yeah. Uh, that really is it. Let's try this one. Joseph Offshore, have you ever ridden an e-mountain bike? What's your opinion? Uh, I haven't ridden one, and I'm totally not opposed to it. Uh, a lot of the enduro races that I do here now have an uh, e-bike category, which is really cool. Uh, I would love to give that a try. Um, a bunch of the local shops carry e-bike rentals. I just haven't pulled the trigger. haven't done it yet. Okay. Stacy's Mountain Bike Life. What's your favorite trail in Austin? What's your favorite mm-hmm. restaurant in Austin? Current favorite trail is oh man that's tough i would have to say there's one called at reveille peak ranch which is where i took brian the first time he came to visit uh there's a trail called jaws but a trail got redone in there and it's called flodello especial named after the beer modello obviously and it is awesome it's all tabletops and jumps so that's my favorite trail Favorite restaurant, Brotherton's Barbecue. It's in Pflugerville, Texas. 
and it is Texas barbecue and Korean fusion. Good God. It's so good. Here, not a question. <laughs> like shit. Of course, Joseph would say that you're you're coming up pretty soon and probably won't do it unless I get my shit together. Are you going to ask him questions like Audio Technica or Shore? No, because I won't <laughs> understand the answers. He knows so much more than all of us. All right. I, I find this a, a kind of an interesting question. And I'm. All right, Danny McCaskill, talented or just playing crazy? Super talented. But he probably yeah. a little bit crazy to do. I don't know if he comes up with the, all the ideas for his videos or if he has like some sort of like marketing team driving that and helping him with it. Um, but I remember the one where he was like jumping around between the rooftops and that one is pretty crazy. But I think... I think a lot of people that come from the downhill discipline and the trials discipline don't really like, they don't see crashing or failure the same way a lot of the rest of us see it. People coming from BMX are the same. They see when they try a trick, they see that they think about what it would be if they landed it or how, or how the, they see themselves landing it when a lot of us see ourselves crashing. Okay. Charles Heathen, when are you coming back to Bentonville? Really good question. Uh, Soon-ish. Um, I want to do a bunch of the Arkansas Enduro series this summer. Um, I want to go back to Kohler. That place is amazing. And I felt bad when a whole bunch of YouTubers went there for Outer Bike and it rained because it is literally a mecca. Ozark mountains that are su super humid, not that much elevation, and it's it's fun. I love it there. Yeah. Josh Hunter wants to know what made Eric choose the animal on his YouTube channel? Armadillo, potato bug. What is it? It's an armadillo. And uh, I think it's because it's like the most Texas animal ever. Um, also the, I, the tuck and roll thing came into play and do you see, they're all over the roadside here. Like most other areas where you would see like rabbits or skunks or whatever smashed in the road. It's, it's always armadillos here. And I think they're really weird creatures, like almost prehistoric or alien with the way that they work. Bentonville Mario V wants to know Bentonville or Moab. Well, I have a bias right now, but I just haven't been to Moab. Um, so I can't really I haven't been say. to Bentonville. I've been to Moab, but not Bentonville. Um, I don't, I grew up, uh, in the Northeast, east of the Great Lakes. So humidity doesn't bother me too much. Um, but I, I don't do that well with aridity. So I, I'm going to say Bentonville just because I know what's there. And I only have ideas, inklings of what's in Moab just because I watch YouTube. So. I kind of do too. I did the 24 hours of Moab twice. And I remember going the first year and going, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. But what you, what you find out is you're 15 miles south of town for this event. And the first year I did it, it was rained out after eight hours. It was just too cold. And so I had nothing to do the next day. So I went with my brother and we went to Slick Rock. And I'm like, oh, this is what they're talking about. So my only stuff in uh, Moab is this 24-hour race. And then Slick Rock was just, holy Jesus, that's that's astounding. Stacy's Mountain Bike Life, Flat Rock Ranch or Spider Mountain? Man, those are so different. Um, Flat Rock is a ranch that you can just pedal around and there are XC trails. There's a lot of climbs. There's a bunch of enduro stages. Um, Flat Rock Ranch is good for like a whole entire weekend full of riding and never riding the same thing twice. Spider Mountain is good for not having to climb uphill and being able to hit features over and over and over and progressing through repetition. So they're really different Spider is way closer to me, and I have a season pass, so it's just where I end up going. But I do also like Flat Rock Ranch. So that's like asking tacos 
or a Toyota. They're yeah. that far apart. Okay. All right. Here are our conclusion questions. What's your favorite word? Um, I say what a lot just because I am partially deaf. Um, I say nope a lot too. Just because, it, okay. well, that also used to be the slogan for my channel. Uh, I also say, yeah, dude, a lot, which I don't like. It, it makes me sound like a doucher, but that is what it is. <laughs> What's your favorite curse word? Oh, the F word. I, you I, can I, say I, it. You can say it and blow my monetization. Mm -hmm. I don't care. No, it's okay. I'm trying not to say it. Like it, when I'm on the bike and something happens, it, it feels really good to say it. But I also recognize at the same time that, I mean, I have an eight year old kid. Oh God, so look, who's, look at this asshole showed up. Oh boy. <laughs> What's up, Robert? Hey Robert, how are you doing? Hopefully Robert will be a guest someday and that will demonetize within what, what do you think? Five or 10 seconds. Mm. Yeah. Your live streams are way too sh sh short for him. Yeah. He goes on and on it's all nighter. Good to see you, Robert. All right. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Honestly, I would, I would love to learn how to make videos and edit better. Uh, anything in that realm. Uh, I'm a software engineer by day. Um, but I love being creative. I used to design as well. Like I said earlier, um, and I've been editing long enough to know that I would really like, really like it if that was my full-time thing, but it might also make my hobby not so fun. So I don't know. Oh, look at this. Isn't that nice? <laughs> hey, Ken. All right. Well, that's just about it. However, seriously, don't forget to uh, subscribe to Eric's channel, No Front Breaks. It is super high quality, very OG. And uh, take a look at that Patreon. Patreon's not that tough to do for a buck a month, three bucks a month, five bucks a month, whatever you can do. It does make a big difference. It really, really does. It really, really does. All the links are in the description of this thing. And Eric, uh, I will see you in Austin in maybe late March or April. Okay. I'm down. And then we're I'm excited. We'll ride again. Yeah, for the first time. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Thanks for Thank having me on. I appreciate you it. You bet. Thanks. See ya.